Hello, my name is Neil Redfern. I'm the Executive Director of the Council for British Archaeology, and we are delighted to host the Marsh Community Archaeology Awards in partnership with the Marsh Charitable Trust. Hello and welcome to the Marsh Community Archaeology Awards and I'm delighted today to be talking to Nina O'Hare from the Worcestershire Archive and Archaeology Service. Nina, hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you very now, much for being here. Brilliant. Now you've been shortlisted, your project, um, Small Pits, Big Ideas, for the Community Archaeology Project of the Year Award 2023. How do you feel about that? And then could you tell me a little bit about your project? I'm very excited, first of all. Um, and I think a little bit sorry I'm here on my own. The project has had a lot of people, as I'm sure you're probably aware with most community projects, a lot of people have been involved in it. So Small Pits Big Ideas has been a community test pitting project um, in six villages around Worcestershire. Um, villages that still lived in, but are thought to have medieval or certainly historic origins um, so we did digs between autumn 2021 and and last summer so summer 2022 and um, we dug 96 test pits across those six villages and over 400 people took parts um, both in the digging and the finds processing afterwards so it's been a really fab project to investigate so many places where people live and find out kind of all the kind of quite ordinary things that can be in back gardens but that tell really big stories as well as sometimes quite individual uh quite personal stories as well which is yeah there's been lots of fun do you have a favorite story <laughs> do i have a favorite story uh i think i've got one favorite story i've definitely got a couple that come to mind we had um a couple of georgian counterfeit coins some half pennies from the village of Witchingford. Um, I didn't know that um, counterfeits were such a common, relatively common thing uh, in Georgian era, but it probably came from Birmingham, uh, which we're obviously not too far away from. It was apparently a bit of a centre uh, for counterfeit coins because the, there were button makers in the area and round metal discs <laughs> for buttons, they're not too far from coins. So things like that, and we've had sort of little doll's heads and things, and I just, you know, those those ones, I wish they could tell their story, you know, is yeah. that something that was much loved and mourned when it was lost or is it kind of just a bit of a forgotten toy and so yeah, yeah everything in between. So what's really brilliant is they're the sorts of finds that really take you back to individuals and people don't they and they really make the stories personal which I love. So 400 people that's I mean that's an amazing number of people isn't it um, and um, what do you think they got out of the out of the project? Uh, yes, yeah, so I think a whole range of things. So most people who took part hadn't done any archaeology before. So I think for a lot of people, just the thrill of being the first person to find something, to hold it for 200, 300, 500 years is really special. And I think that's something that um, archaeology offers that nothing else does in quite the same way, being able to hold that physical connection to the past. Mm. So a lot of people said how much they enjoyed that. And particularly... Um, quite we had quite a few children take part um i think we might have inspired a few archaeologists hopefully for the future um or just um lifelong interests there's quite a lot of people we met who said oh they were interested in archaeology but didn't know quite how to get into it or they ended up doing something else um, and i think just connecting with like-minded people investigating a place where a lot of people are fairly local to the area and i think that just that sense of history and the connection with actually there is archaeology under your feet pretty much everywhere. All our test pits are in back gardens. So I think it shows the power of kind of ordinary people and ordinary history, um, but is is often overlooked, um, but is so important. Yeah, no, that's 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 absolutely brilliant. Um, Nina, I'm I'm actually here to to add a little bit more news for you to actually say we're not just talking to the shortlisted candidates. We are actually here to tell you that 
your project, Small Pits, Big Ideas, has actually won the Community <laughs> Archaeology Project of the Year Award 2023. If I can get this come into focus, there we are. Yeah, just about. Small <laughs> Pits, Big that. Ideas. Uh, you are the winners. That's wonderful to hear. Oh, thank you so much. That's that's very that's very special to hear. And I think particularly this project, uh, we've been running it for Worcester Archaeological Society and all the volunteers uh, who've been involved. I think that's a real testament to everyone. So thank you. That's very exciting. Yeah, excellent. Fantastic. I am so sorry we can't do this in person, but I, we're actually committed. We want to come and see you. And if, if, if possible, just find out more about the project and actually give you your certificate. But thank hopefully you. for now, congratulations and well done. Thank you. That, that's really wonderful to hear. <laughs>
community engagement department at York Archaeology, um, two main strands. One is our public training uh, program, where we're constantly trying to expand um, the offers available there from very short taster courses to really in-depth um, archaeological training aimed at basically anyone that wants to have a go. Um, and then there's our more, more recent wellbeing initiative, the Archaeology and Prescription Program. I was one of the team that helped put that together and we've been digging on our site at Willow House in York uh, into our third year now. Um, and this is a programme aimed at anyone really that may have never felt that archaeology was something they can do, um, working with people um, through the social prescribing system, people that have been prescribed by the GPs, by link workers. Um, we work with various charity partners um such as converge at york st john university changing lives many others um and really exploring how all of the activities around field archaeology and associated process can be used um to improve people's lives and it's had some yeah, amazing results so far what do you think it is about field archaeology about being in a trench that actually um means that it can address these wider broader social issues that you've just discussed there's there's m many factors actually it, it it fills a lot of the kind of the, the the needs i think so one one thing i really love is the kind of inherent communality of archaeology it's a team effort um from a beginner archaeologist on the first ever dig through to a you know a very senior specialist that spent many decades honing their crafts each person makes a very meaningful contribution whether you're filling out a record for a newly discovered context whether you're cleaning a find um, whether you're contributing to a report processing data all of these things have meaning they in both a professional context and a personal one um, so i think that's one thing that um, any contrib contribution, no matter how major or minor, is definitely relevant and real. And the site work obviously goes a long way beyond excavation. Um, we tend to have our finds processing right next to the trench. Um, people tend to like to be close together. It's um, good conversations can strike up while you're carrying out the work. And there's the sense of excitement as well. We've noticed when when the nicer finds have come out of the ground, there's been no jealousy. I think people have just been delighted to be there uh, and be part of that moment that we do share. Um, even many years into my career, that excitement hasn't gone away. And I think on a more personal note, having worked many years in commercial archaeology, um, it can be a very stressful career. You can work in bad weather. It can be quite challenging. But sometimes you'll find yourself working on an interesting feature and you can kind of lose yourself in it you know it's uh, good for mindfulness for grounding and you, you can almost reach like an archaeological zen i like to think about it and i think that that joy that keeps us all in the heritage world i think is what we're trying to kind of bottle and share um and one thing we've discussed with colleagues across the sector um is the value of creating an environment kind of the archaeology is the door that opens you into this environment a shared interest that you can get people together and i think it, it provides the interest the excitement the the teamwork um that can really set people onto a, a better path aaron i'm actually here to say that as part of the marsh community archaeology awards I am delighted to say that you are actually the winner of the Community Archaeologist of the Year 2023. Wow. Well, that's... <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. Neil. This that's, is so uh, well deserved. One, uh, of the, one of the rare well. moments in my life I'm speechless. <laughs> Excellent. That's what we like. Um, so, yes, I'm, I'm really sorry that this is uh, we're doing this virtually, but congratulations um, uh, as our Community Archaeologists of the Year 2023. Thank you so much. I uh, can't wait to call me mum. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I'm sure she'll be absolutely delighted. <laughs>I'm delighted that I'm being joined, joined by Penny Horner for this discussion around the Marsh Community Archaeology Awards and the Community Archaeologist of the Year Award.
Now, Penny, you've been shortlisted for the award. Um, congratulations. That's very exciting. Um, would you be able to tell us a little bit about your project, please? Yes. So um, we're talking about um, a project um, which was uh, from Archaeology Scotland, and it was looking at West Arthur Merkin and identifying 10 sites um, with which to develop a, I mean, sometimes it's called a heritage trail, but but to have 10 adopt a monument type sites, um, which we, we've done, we identified them and we've developed in different ways. Each individual one has its own story. And um, so the outcome has been some signage, um, some information signage, um, but more importantly, um, a website with lots of information about um, those individual sites and lots of stories. And they connect in turn with um, the AHA site. I'm secretary of AHA, which is the Arden American um, Heritage Association. And um, we, um, uh, <clears throat> and so that connects with that website too. So there's lots of, of information and new information, and lots of stories which hopefully will be accessible to folk who um, either local um, or visitors who come to look at the individual monuments. Can I ask you what sparked your interest in this? Well, I've been interested in archaeology for as long as I can remember. Mm. Um, <laughs> so um, I, I went to school in York. I remember turning up to you know the various digs in York with a um, without a trowel, actually, and not being allowed to be a volunteer on the dig. Um, when my children were small, I did a diploma in archaeology, or, or I did the course anyway. I didn't take the exam because I had small children and no time. Um, but I was involved in a, in a wonderful diploma course with Oxford University with their continuing education area. And then since then, I mean, I just take interest in archaeology. And then when I moved to Ardner Merkin, this is just a phenomenal area with wonderful, well, lots of archaeology, lots of undiscovered archaeology, but more to the point, lots, lots of stories. This is a community that hasn't moved, really. The local community has been here for centuries and has been affected by some major events, um, you know, inevitably the 1745 uprising and the... Um, and subsequently the clearances, um, horrible name for uh, mass eviction. Um, and so that has shaped the more recent uh, stories um, of the peninsula. Um, but going back further, there was obviously a lot of activity on this peninsula with, um, you know, so we have, have there have been some um, Mesolithic lithic finds, but, um, but, you know, there are, several um, chamber cairns, Neolithic cha chamber cairns, and onwards, you know, we had a famous Viking burial being found here. And so it's just a, a wonderful place for both archaeology um, going back, but also the more recent past too. That, that, that just sounds absolutely wonderful. So what does it feel like to be actually shortlisted as the Community Archaeologist of the Year? For the, for it's the like year? strange, actually, because um, it, it's not something that, you know, I'd uh, you know, looked for or I, I, I do this because I love it. Um, and I, I, I love I love this area. I love the archaeology. I love I love particularly trying to um, involve the, the community in its in its widest sense with um, what's going on here with the, the fines, um, because there, there is, you know, the. You know, some folk aren't terribly interested in, you know, these old stones that go back uh, a very long way. And it, it's trying to bring those a bit to life, too. Brilliant. Penny, I'm actually delighted to say that not only are we here just to talk about you being shortlisted for the Community Archaeologist of the Year Award, but I'm here to tell you that you've actually been highly commended in this category. All right, thank you. <laughs> Not quite in person, I know, but congratulations. <laughs> um, 
the 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 judges thought your your commitment and your passion was absolutely fantastic and you know wanted to really be able to celebrate that with you and so congratulations for being highly commended in this category thank you very much <laughs>
Absolutely, absolutely. And so I could understand why the young people were so keen to do this as their project, because I think, you know, they saw something that maybe I hadn't and they, yeah, and it comes back to their pride of place as well. I think they wanted to find out more so they could share it as well with others. Dame, what do you think makes really good youth engagement projects? Time and listening, I think. <laughs> you need a lot of time to build relationships. You need to listen to what they want to do, what they're telling you. Mm. Um, and yeah, just the time to build on that. So um, it was pretty much youth led, the project that we did. So we had lots of conversations uh, about what was possible, um, but all the time the young people were making the decisions. Um, and it's amazing what happens when you let them do that. So it's we were lucky we had quite a long time to run this project um, and that was that was lovely. So we could have lots and lots of conversations um, sort of introduce them to different kind of experts, as we might call them along the way. But they would always decide which direction it was going to go in. Um, yeah. And I think really that's that's the key is just giving them their voice and letting them yeah. lead. Absolutely, it's empowering them to actually start to yeah. explore and make decisions themselves. Yeah. I think that's, that's really fantastic. Well, Jane, actually, I'm really delighted to say that I'm not only here just to talk to you about being a shortlisted candidate um, for the Youth Engagement Project of the Year for the Marsh Community Archaeology Awards, but to actually let you know that the Kelsey Archaeology Project is actually the winner in this category. Oh my goodness. So you can see that. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uh, oh, that's... There we go, there we go. I can that's... see it, I can see it. <laughs> You that are is brilliant news. Oh, our young people would be so thrilled, so excited to hear that. And all the partners. I've been in touch well with done. so many people about this, you know, from yeah. the care home manager to YouthLink Scotland that we did the conference for. Everyone is so excited and all the community link workers who put us in touch with older people in the communities, as well as the young people. It's brilliant. And the high school as well. So yes. yeah, oh, that's amazing news. Thank you. Huge, huge, huge congratulations. Thank we know we, we know how much brilliant work you absolutely do. And we just think this is a real, real testament for everything you do. I'm delighted now to be talking to Hazel Long from the County Fermanagh's Vernicular Heritage Group. Hazel, hello, how are you? Hello. Hello, Colin. Thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. OK, so Hazel, your project has been shortlisted in the Youth Engagement Project of the Year Award for 2023. I was wondering, could you tell me a little bit about your project? Yes, uh, well, the project um, is the study of vernacular buildings in, in County Fermanagh. Um, it, uh, we had uh, we have a core project, um, uh, which is what it says in the tin study in vernacular buildings. But I got um, a little idea and a little bit um, well, a, a, a substantial amount of funding thanks to the his historic environment division for to add value to that project. So it was really a skills heritage project, and. Um, we, um, what, what happened was, I, uh, it was like a drip um, that had such a wide uh, ripple effect. Um, I contacted um, eight schools, primary schools, um, to target P6 and P7 key stage two children. Um, unfortunately, one of them wasn't able to take part. So we had seven schools um, and, with between the upper and lower Loch Erne regions of County Fermanagh and chatted to the principals and sold the, the, the uh, project to them. And the project was um, a research and, and raising awareness project of County Fermanagh's vernacular heritage, where we were inviting the uh, pupils really, and obviously we needed to buy in for the teachers and the parents and etc. But it was about learning and engaging with their built heritage in their locality and gathering the social uh, history connected to the buildings. So the task for them was to pick like a vernacular uh, building um, within their area. Obviously I went out 
I explained the word vernacular. I uh, worked from the um, caring, I'm just grabbing it here. It's the um, produced by HED. It's the caring um, for, for our vernacular heritage book that they produced. And um, we explained vernacular and ta they went, they were tasked then to um, pick a building and find out all about that building and um, then chat to the, the, the oldest person that they know connected to that building and gather some uh, social history uh, around the building. But tell us all about the building, tell us where it is, tell us about the stone, tell us how it was built, um, etc, etc. Gather old photos, take some new photos, um, much more recent photos, and um, then interview this the oldest person um, that that you know, and we left it or quite open, um, which was which was a good, was great because it just allowed the children um, to express their own creativity really, and we were just absolutely blown away by the enthusiasm. The well, Hazel, actually, I'm here to say that I'm not here just to have a little chat with you, but I'm here to say that your project has been rated as highly commended in our wards. And we're actually oh. delighted to say that you are one of our highly commended projects for the um, Youth Engagement Project of the Year 2023. Um, oh, wow. We thought what you had done was just absolutely spectacular. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Well, it's not me. It's not me. I have to. It's. It was so successful because of the buy-in from the schools, the principals, the teachers, obviously the pupils, but the parents, they just loved it as well. And then all those contributors and speakers and my colleagues that helped me with the intergenerational events and everything. So like for for the pupils of St. Ronan, St. Ninnan, Smote, Belik, St. Davix, John the Baptist, Kesh, this is for you. <laughs> Absolutely, and you're all highly commended for a really fantastic project. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I am talking to one of our shortlisted candidates for the Young Archaeologist of the Year, Roisin O'Toole. Roisin, hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Excellent. Now, Roisin, I know you've just finished your A-levels and um, you're about to go to university. Where are you going to go to university? Uh, hopefully Durham, provided everything goes well on results day. Excellent. And what are you going to study? Uh, surprisingly, archaeology. Surprisingly, archaeology. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Now, I know you've been a member of the Young Archaeologist Club for years and years and years and years. What is it about archaeology that you love? Um, I think it's I've, I've always found history and science really interesting. And so it's that sort of perfect mix. Um, and it's it's a way to sort of get much more hands on with history. Um, and it's it's much more personal as well um, a lot of the time. So it's it's just something that. I've always found really interesting um, and obviously the community aspect of it that working in a big group um, is so wonderful. Yeah that's that sort of collaborative nature and that conversation that comes out of it. So what can you put your finger on the thing that got you interested in archaeology in the first place? Um, well the, the, the first time I came across archaeology uh, was a family holiday in York actually with the uh, Jorvik Centre's Dig Museum um, yeah. And I just, I, I loved it so much. Um, and we found a, a leaflet for the Young Archaeologists Club. Um, I, I turned eight that summer. And as soon as we got back home, I joined the waitlist for two of the local branches. And that was kind of the moment, really. Um, and it's just carried on from that point. Absolutely fantastic. So I used to work there when it was called ARC way back in the mid 90s. And, and so, yeah, I know that, that particular museum is fantastic because it just gives you the gives you the bug of that sort of sense of discovery and exploration, mm -hmm. and, you know, that 
place to you know spark your curiosity that's absolutely fantastic um obviously um, our young archaeologists club are brilliant and fantastic and they're from the ages of eight to 16. um how obviously you've moved beyond that age now um how did you find the young archaeologists club being a member oh it, it's so like it's 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 one of the few ways that you can regularly stay involved in archaeology as, as a kid there are so you know it's it's very difficult to find opportunities um and it's it's one of those places where you can find people your own age who are really interested because obviously it's it's a slightly more niche interest i think is fair to say um yeah <laughs> so it's it's just really lovely to find other people your age who are interested and to get hands-on um you know i the first time i was ever on a site was through a dig it competition so the opportunities that I've gotten through that are so great um it, it just it really is something that means that you feel much more in touch and connected with people like you which is is really lovely no that, that's fantastic and so obviously since finishing as a young archaeologist you've been a young leader helping out run a branch how's that been um well, it's been chaotic <laughs> um I, I mean with all things like that there's you know the people are what make it um you know we we had at Chilton Yak the um opportunity to be involved with the From Ordinary project um so I got to help with all of that which was great fun um yeah it's I for me personally I'm a young leader at two branches um so Chilton and Aylesbury so seeing the differences there are really interesting um but it's it's just nice to be able to give back i think you know i got so much out of the young archaeologist club so being able to help others in any small way that i can also access that is is really lovely rosie i'm absolutely delighted to say that not only have you been shortlisted for the young archaeologist of the year award for the marsh community archaeology awards but you are actually the winner of the young archaeologist of the year award 2023 if i can get this in focus there you are congratulations thank you <laughs> how do you feel about that um chuffed <laughs> yeah it's um, yeah, I <laughs> don't quite know what to say, but very, very happy. I've got Tilly Lewis with me at the moment. Now, Tilly has been shortlisted in the Young Archaeologist of the Year Award 2023 category. Tilly, Young Archaeologist, what does it feel like to be shortlisted, to be put forward for an award? Really good. What did you first get into archaeology? Well, I started like in Egypt. In Egypt? That's well, amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and what is it you like about archaeology? You get to know how they live. Yeah. And would you like to be an archaeologist when you grow up? Yeah. Fantastic. I'm an archaeologist and I can tell you now it's a fantastic thing to do and it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've possibly have to like being outside in the rain but we know you were at our festival of archaeology opening event at the weekend in Powys Castle and it rained a lot there didn't it <laughs> yeah it got really muddy didn't yeah. it <laughs> and now I know that you got to uh, have a little go at digging in the trench did you enjoy that yeah a lot do you want to show the photo yeah she's got a photo to show you oh great so I hold it up so you can see. Oh, look at that. That's fantastic. Oh, now I'm sure we'll have some more photos of you digging in that trench as well, but that's absolutely brilliant. Well done. That that is that is really good. Can I ask, did you find anything? Yes. Oh, we've done it. Sorry. Yeah, I, mean, I found that. Oh, is that a tiny piece of pottery? Yeah. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. And I found a broken nail. A broken nail. Oh, wow, that's really good. Now, Tilly, yeah. I'm not just here to talk to you about being a shortlisted candidate. I'm here also to say that the judges of the award have decided that you should be our highly commended shortlisted candidate for the Archaeological Awards. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. 
you. You're very welcome. Well done. And well, so we have a we have a certificate here for you, and we are really looking forward to seeing how you get on in your journey through archaeology in the future. Well done. Thank you. Thank you.